right, we're live. All right. So I was I was told we got some some people hanging out in the chat a little early. Oh, I guess very we were, early. So I want to say Chemical Coyote huh? was here before I even sat down at the computer and was able to even pull up chat. Nice, nice. Well, we like it. Well, we have to say that we uh, appreciate that and we appreciate the loyal support. Thank you, Kelly. Happy Saturday and roll tide to you too. Um, you know, because it uh, it makes us fun when we know that um, people really want to interact with us or at least hear what we have to say, right, JT? So mm -hmm, this is uh, it's a glorious Saturday to be here from this special edition. So we're gonna we're not gonna. I don't want to take up too much of your time about this with you guys about this because we got an action pack bill. We're actually going to do this in three segments, and I'm going to say this again after the introduction. One, we're going to do some data analysis, um, give you a bunch of numbers and all those kind of things, so you can kind of see what um, Coach DeBoer has done in the past. Second, after that, we're going to do film analysis, basically trying to give you a real picture, a visual now of what that actually looks like on film. Do our film break down on that? And then third, we know there are a ton of questions. We hear that we see that there are things already in the inbox. What about this? What about that? So we want to be able to talk to you guys after that and answer those questions and give you the best take on that. So three pieces to it. We're going to get started with that right now. All right, so I bet you're asking why I got this cowboy shirt on on this <laughs> on this uh, Alabama show or whatever. Well, I signed some autographs today. The Dallas Cowboys got a big game tomorrow by playing the Packers. Ironically, I played for the Packers and the Cowboys. People were asking me a lot today, who are you rooting for? Who are you rooting for? So I just go ahead and put my shirt on so people can stop asking me who I'm rooting for. I'm rooting for the Cowboys to win the game. But today... I'm rooting for the Alabama Crimson Tide, all right? And so in my little talk right here, um, before I bring my, my son in, I, I got a couple things I need to say to you first, right? So first, thank you to the Bama Standard and all of the uh, followers there who were watching this simulcast with us. We're very grateful for Justin and the gang for uh, the support they allow us to have with that. So thank you guys for being here and being in the chat as well. JT just put it on the screen to subscribe and like. Make sure you hit that there. We're trying to – what the help do we want for you guys? We're trying to get to the century mark. We're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. We're not quite there yet. That, that's, the, uh, that's the millennium mark. Oh, millennium mark. Sorry. You know, we need 1,000 of y'all, okay? Um, and we're not there. And so we're trying to get there. Uh I don't know what that uh, – I guess we'll have to get to that uh, Lamar Thomas uh, uh, thing in a little bit. Um, and then um, I want to talk about this now. I said I'm going to – I just want to put this in here because I know it's already been in there. It's about coaching staffs. What happens when coaches get fired is what you need to know. What happens to those people? JT and I both uh, – have coached, been around a lot of different coaches, or maybe not even when they fire, when they get retired, when their head coach retires, what happens? So a lot of times it's it's known to us in the industry that when the head coach leaves, everybody else's job is in jeopardy. You just, you're, you're sitting, you're waiting, and you're nervous, um, but you're already making calls. You got your agent making calls. If you're in high school, you already started to put your resume out and just trying to figure out where you can go next because when the head coach is gone, Pretty much everybody's contract is terminated. So for us to speculate who's going to remain um, at a school uh, is very, very hard to do. When I became the head coach of JP2 and the other places, I always try to interview people and see um, who I would like to keep from the staff, if any at all, because I might have come with a group that I already like and trust being a head coach means that you that you already you're building those because in your interview most of the time the athletic director is asking right now who are you probably going to come with you do you already know who your coordinator is going to be do you know who your defensive back is going to be and if you got a list that already says hey i've already worked this out um 
with these guys and yes they will come man we like that even better because they were not even necessarily scrambling around or trying to renegotiate or trying to figure out what kind of budget you know it's going to have to have for a staff so um that's um what i want you guys to hear so jt come on in here for a second right um and i, I feel like this would be an appropriate if we could do this right now because i was looking at the score of the uh, <laughs> uh the kansas city game but also was quickly reminded of the video that you showed me of what the weather looked like in Buffalo. In Buffalo, yeah. Yeah, it was bad. If you guys hadn't seen that, this made me want to go to a different place. You're not going to like my lead here. So I feel like we need to go to the beach just for a quick minute. (laughs) Oh, wow. I just need to know know if we can go to the beach for a quick minute because we got this really great company that supports us. And they make you feel at home. And when you look at that Buffalo stuff and you're looking at the weather in Kansas City and, and all this kind of stuff, it makes you want to go to a place like this, something that you can create at your house. So let's see if JT. Let me tell you about Beaches LLC. Yes, Beaches LLC is your source in the state of Alabama and the Florida Panhandle for exquisite court sand beach pools by Biodesign USA. A biodesign beach sculpted pool is crafted with beach entries, customized seating areas, and swimming zones, and they all can be personalized to your swimming needs. The biodesign swimming pool is meant to immerse you in your surrounding environment. The illusion of a truly beautiful beach can be created and extended onto the patio area, creating one seamless shore environment. Let them help you turn your dream backyard escape into reality with an eco-friendly, more durable, less time, and less expensive to maintain, totally customizable pool. To learn more about turning your dream into a reality, please visit their website at www.yourbackyardbeach.com. Okay, so... Am I supposed so, to do chimes for you? There you go. Uh, yeah, I do. So can you please make sure you put that little... Uh, toss that I gave you on the highlight reel because you got to admit that was pretty damn No, that was good. Yeah, I, guess I, had, I, I had no <laughs> idea what where this was going. <laughs> well, I knew I needed to be there. So, uh, again, thank you to Beaches LLC for jumping on with Tiki's Take. And, uh, you know, one day we're going to be fortunate to have something like that. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and get into part one of this, right? Oh, right. And, and the quick reminders for people who just showed up again. Um, We know there's going to be a lot of questions in chat. We're going to save all of the questions for the end after we get through uh, some of the film sessions just so that we can address the things that that we need to to get addressed, um, especially when it comes to coaches and who's here and who's not here and players, all that kind of stuff. We will put them in the chat. I'll put them in a queue. We'll we'll get them at the end. Yes, thank you for reminding me of that because our main goal is to be able to give you the information on what we feel like the play will look like for Alabama. Can we? Do we have any kind of insight on what the offense might look like? What does he like to run? Um, and then actually show you the film of some of those things too and dive into that. So that's going to take us a good minute. So we need for you all to be patient and understand that, and then we'll get to some of the other questions, as JT said at the end. So I, what we wanted to do first in the first part of the show is be able to talk about some some data and uh, analysis, analysis and JT's done a tremendous job of just looking at some, I don't know, a lot of different categories, right? So is there somewhere you want to start with that on, you know, saying, all right, well, why don't we just start with the offensive side, all right? Because everybody's going to be wondering about what is this going to look like for Jalen Milrow? Are we still going to run the ball? Are we throwing the ball? Um, Do the formations look different? You know, we had Tommy Reese come in. How mm-hmm. much is this is actually going to change? So why don't we stick on the offensive side of the ball right now? Is there anything glaring to you that he's kind of done in the past, particularly why is it Washington, that you think our people should know? Um, yeah. Um, so there is – oh, we know he doesn't run the ball as much as um, the predecessors. Um, but I think that there is a perception that he really doesn't run the ball like ever. But that's well, not quite does. true. Right. It's it's still it's sixty is sixty percent pass, 
40 percent run um almost balanced like i know that um that 20 percent different i mean it's 10 it's 10 percent off from the average over the last two years but 60 40 is kind of that's a, that's that's yeah that's split that's 50 50 60 40 is a new 50 50 isn't it just because yeah, of the i mean it, the, the way this game is now 60 40 i mean i mean we see it in the nfl all the time right it in my mind uh you know third and three is like an obvious rundown which is not true anymore (laughs) third and three means pass for most teams hell i mean even third and one a lot of times if you're not the philadelphia eagles basically third and two or longer is gonna be a gonna be a pass pass right so um 60 40 is not not bad at all um which you'll also see because i i went and i looked at what are their top formations um let a lot less heavy than we saw the last year. Um, I think it'll look more more like Sarkeesian. Um, they like to get into doubles, um, ten personnel. So one one back, zero tight ends, two wide receivers each side. Um, then they also from there they like to get into um, eleven personnel doubles, where they'll have two wide receivers on one side, a a tight end, but he's off the ball, and then a receiver. Um, then, then I think their third favorite is like empty, which you can talk about that. You you actually enlightened me that that was actually they were actually running quads and empty, and not just three by two, um, which is yikes. Uh, it, that's nightmare um, for defense. <laughs> that's a problem. Um, but then they like to get into various forms of trips. So I think trips in totality is what they like to run the most, whether that be trips with the tight end in the trips, which is um, what a lot of people are going to call Trey. Um, then they've got trips closed, where they've got three receivers on one side, the tight end away and attached to the line, and then they'll get into some trips open as well. Um, but it's essentially some form of trips slash Trey. Then it's going to be empty and then your your double sets um and the back is going to be set strong um to most of these sometimes they'll get into a dot or something like that but um we know we're still going to see a lot of shifts we're going to see a lot of motion um they're they're going to line up and look like they're going to do one thing and they're going to move to something else getting to getting something else like that and then it, it's going to be a you're going to have to have command of the offense yeah. So before, so for the formation standpoint, meaning how they line up, it should be because uh, what we saw the past year at Alabama, we we still saw a lot of different formations, or it started to progress a little bit. To the uh, eye, people won't really see that much of a difference. You think, or is it, you know, you know, if you're just a layman's person and you're looking at it and you're looking out there. It's not going to look too much different, right? No, I, don't, I mean, f- from last year, maybe just fewer tight ends on the field at the same time. Mm-hmm. So, not as much twelve personnel, or are you saying in that the the formation doesn't necessarily mean the personnel because you're still going to get the same formations if you got twelve or thirteen. Yeah, but I, I think the personnel is going to be much different. Um, the I didn't see, and I, I forgot to run the personnel report, but at least when I was looking at the formations, checking the film to make sure they matched what the stats said, it was all um, 10. It was either what we were talking about earlier, 01, 10, or 11. Yes. Okay. And so, um, well, when we talk to A1, go ahead and explain O one before we. Yeah. So how we do personnel numbers, uh, the first digit is how many backs are in the game. The second digit is how many tight ends are in the game. Um, so 10 personnel, one back, zero tight ends, um, 11 personnel, one back, one tight end, um, O one, zero backs, one tight end, which Anytime you have zero backs, it's going to be some form of empty, whether or not it's uh, 
a tight end attached. You know, I don't I don't know how they're going to do it. With it. it might be quads and a tight end and backside. There's there's many different formations you can get into with all of the different personnels. But anytime it's 0-1, that just means empty. Yeah, unless you got a Debo Samuel or Kendrick Law or something that you could throw back there as a right. back. <laughs> Uh, for the personnel. Okay, so I did look at that, and JT, uh, thank you for sharing that with us, and I did look at the formation just a little bit, and it, although he was diving into the formations, I, I kind of looked at what the personnel group in these, right, you know, again, it's all on personnel. Do you have good tight ends? How many do you have? How did you recruit? This type of stuff, so um, the uh, 10, 11, 12 um, seemed to be his uh, highest um, amount of Groupings, and believe it or not, the O one grouping, as you said, was in there too, as a you know, in the top four uh, groupings. So he's trying to spread you out <laughs> um, and do some things uh, there. Okay, all right. So, what, how do you, what do you take that from there? Now that you're looking at the formations, um, anything else you saw and what that means from you know maybe how you play. Or, what kind yeah, of plays? Um, I think that inherently kind of dictates what your run game is, and I think that's backed up by um, some of the breakdowns on their run concepts. They anecdotally, mm -hmm. um, the heavier your sets are, the more likely somebody's pulling. The more likely you're going to be doing gap scheme things, yeah, seems... power, uh, trap, lead, counter. Not that they don't do these things. Uh, they just don't do them nearly as often as um, as inside zone and outside zone. So yes. when you only got five linemen in the game, man, not a tight end. Well, they'll have a tight end in the game. But we'll say five and a half linemen. It's much easier just to run zone. Um, seems like the, the idea is to spread people out. Ooh, look, spread offense. Uh, Who would have guessed? Spread people out, try to get um, an even number in the box, even not meaning two, four, six, even meaning hat on a hat, one for one, um, and then run the ball from there, maybe even plus one because you got, uh, you got your quarterback who can run, um, which wish I would have got my, my plays in there because I did have a couple quarterback runs that they have um, that I think that um, – we might see more of they don't do it now and i think kind of that was part of that is when you got michael Penix jr slinging a rock all over the place and he's a heisman candidate for his arm um you don't need to have him run qb counter and sweeps and power and all that kind of stuff with the quarterback um but when you got Jalen Miro, maybe you can start it's a good coach's uh, offense never is stagnant just because that's what you did doesn't mean that's always what you're going to do right you have a system your system should adapt to the personnel that you have on your team so knowing that they have uh, quarterback runs in the system maybe some of the, some more of that shows up uh, with what we got that's right. And so I'll, I'll dive in that a little bit more. And I do want to say, man, JT, and I, I just want to, because I, you know, in, uh, in my deal, I was thinking, you know, our mantra is so much of run the damn ball, be physical, and all this kind of stuff, right? And there are certain type of runs that, that happen uh, with that, the powers, the counters, and just the aggressiveness of that. Um, you know, I'm hoping he stays with that. Um I do need to say that in, inside zone can, can be a very physical type of run. And we ran a lot of it last year. You know, it's not something new because you create the double teams and things of that nature. So as JT was saying, that has been his favorite run. I did look at the stats and look at the, uh, the numbers, and it was 31% inside zone mm -hmm. order run. That's pretty high when you start, you know, saying, hey, you know, yeah, well, and a lot of run. it was, and a lot of it was read option anyway. That's right, and that's the other piece where JT's getting into. We can talk about that. Or how you can actually use a quarterback to keep the ball and throw it, or have a quarterback pull it and run it. So there's added pieces of that. Because when I was first, when I was looking at it, I was like, man, I don't know, this is kind of booty. Uh, but you know, I'm so 
um, used to Jalen Monroe and wanting to run it. And then I'm looking at other stuff like, man, you know, dang it, pull it, you know, or, <laughs> or uh, something that just chasing it and run it back down in there. They can't get it really going, you know. All right. The next piece and why I thought that was so interesting is, is that 30% because the next run in the um, data sheet, they call it a pull and lead, right? It's basically a sweep in my mind. You got a well, puller. Yeah, so I was looking at those because they were all like different, right? They had like what kind of looked like a wing T belly without the wing. So it's like a yeah. buck sweep, I guess, except with just one puller instead of two. Yeah. And then some of them look like power. That's right. They look like counter. They look like power. So I was really just kind of lumping it all in there because when you look at counter. So anyway, the pull and lead was like 17% and then the counter was at 14%. So there weren't anything close to the inside zone. You know yeah. you're going to get heavy inside zone, inside, inside zone. Throw the bubble, you know, that kind of thing. Seems a little elementary. Um, not very uh, creative as we're always talking as analysts and stuff. Hey, you know, it's just kind of boring. But if it's effective and your guys can cut and do those things, Michigan's run game is kind of boring <laughs> too, right? But they're, you know, running it down your throat just because they're physical the same way Alabama has been. Now, he was very creative with doing things. Tommy Reese, I'm talking about, was very creative with the runs. I did like his runs. I, I, I don't know if we ever actually said that. I liked the running package that we had. I just thought it was fun to watch. Mm-hmm. And just never knew where the ball was going to go because people are crossing your face and all this kind of stuff. This offense, from the small little chunks that I watched, there wasn't a lot of that eye candy. It was just... It's zone, you know. We're going to be smart and block the people that we got to block. Counter, they come wrap around and all this kind of stuff. So, um, I think the run game will be, I don't know. It it, it goes into how he uses Jalen Monroe, a quarterback that can run the ball, or if he's going to try to do something else. With the passing game, so I guess we can go ahead and talk to you. You know, you, anything you want to say about the passing piece? Yeah. So I also looked at their top five most thrown routes. Um, Trying to remember off the top of my head because I left my computer in the car. Um, hitches number one, out routes number two, crossers number three, go routes number four, wide screens number five. Um, those are not complicated routes. Uh, which is, which is great. I mean, I think that simple does not mean simplistic, um, which is something that I definitely live by and is in my own coaching philosophy. We want to make things simple, but we don't want to be um, simplistic. Uh, so with that, and I think a lot of the wide screens probably are actually, since we know that 20% of the plays are RPOs in some form or fashion, um, that's probably where a lot of the wide screens come in. Um, but as I was telling you earlier, those hitches in my mind, you know, you're thinking five yard hitch, oh, yeah, it's just quick. They're not, they're not five yard hitches. Um, most of them are not five yard hitches. Most of them are like somewhere between 15 and 17 yards. It looks like a go route. At least if you look at the play art, looks like a go route. Some others over the top and then they curl up and, and they hit them that way. Um, so I, even some of them look like four verts, you know, and they're all curling up 15 to 17 yards. The times that I were seeing shorter hitch routes were shorter scenarios. Third and three, just get to the sticks, you know. Second and six, maybe it's a seven. But, man, if they got some time, if they feel like they got some time, and it's first and ten, that hitch route might be 22 yards down the field. Um, and it looks like a go, but he curls up. So um, a lot of the, the half field concepts are pretty easy, whether it be um, the, that Ohio concept, out route and a go, which is really in theirs. It's a deep out and a deep hitch, you know, maybe 10 yards on the out route and 17 back to 15 on the hitch and they can shorten that down. Um, they like to run that Carolina route. I don't know what chat would call it at large. I don't even know what most coaches call it, but 
that semicircle we used to call it a we call it a Carolina route in uh in college we called it a Maui corner in high school but five yard it's basically a five yard now slant and then you're gonna take it up vertical 10 yards and then five yards back out to the corner kind of looks like a C um, mm -hmm. so that seems to be a lot and then a lot of isolation routes so they're running people in places to kind of pick on pick on pattern matching and pick on zones where they can get one receiver isolated on somebody one-on-one -on -one and try to fit the ball in that way so um i don't think it is if you look at it at the play diagrams on paper i don't think it's complicated but it looks like to me that it's designed to take those uh take those concepts and confuse the rules of your defense yep so if you want to break down what JT is saying, essentially, you got to have someone at the helm that can run that court, uh, be at quarterback who can. The the concept is not hard, but where you need to throw the ball to and the time that you release the ball no, it's, has it's, to be on yeah. timing. You have to be, be on point. You can't. In some cases, you can't hold the ball too long. Right, that you need to get it out. Those are the RPOs and the other things. Those need to be accurate throws, short, short bubbles, hitches, um, things that you're talking about, the slants, the outs, all those things got to come out on time, on time. But it is kind of fun for him to say, you know what, just don't, if you want to sit, you're going to get hung with something right behind you. <laughs> you know, the, the out nine concept. So if they see a corner, uh, sitting, someone from upstairs is saying, "Hey, tell me, hit that dog on nine, you know, mm -hmm. um, that kind of thing." But that still takes uh, a, a very good cere cerebral quarterback. Um, I'm not just talking about that one route, but some of the other stuff that's that's happening. So you got to be able to go from your first read to your second read, and some of it might have to be pre-snap based upon what he's doing. So I, I thought it was kind of cool um, to watch it and, and difficult. It, the, like JT said it the best, the route seems so simplistic, but at the same time, you had to cover everything. Which one are you going to cover? Are you covering this deep ball I got? Are you covering this out ball? Yeah. Um, I think the best way to put it in is that they're, those concepts are very good at putting one player in conflict, right? He, he can't be right and if he tries to bait, play both, you know, there's three options. Take receiver A, take receiver B, or try to cover both. And two of those options are going to be incorrect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is good. We do want to – so some of the clips that we will show here in a minute are not all the ones that he just said. I can tell you the ones that I actually put in there, I actually put in um, – uh, I'm saying it's a bubble route, but it's off of a uh, – RPO, so we better talk about what the run looked like if you decided to hand it off. A mesh route, those are like crossing routes. Those mm -hmm. are, you know, again, the, with someone else somewhere where you still have short pass, short people that can catch short routes, but there's always something going over the top, too, if you want to get nosy. Quads and what that looks like, I thought it was an inter interesting pick. Um, and then something they called a dagger. Um, and you probably have another name for it. You'll see it, but it's, it's basically... We he likes to run a lot of uh, I call them four beaters, and maybe that's because he p likes to play so much for, you know the, um, up the field someone's going vertical and then you got to dig behind him, um, or coming underneath, um, or perhaps you know the deep overs kind of like what um, Bama has been running in the past. We are going to sneak in a little bit of Fresno film just to see, so you can see what the the plays look like in the in the red uniform instead of the the purple uniform. Well, we'll show some run plays too. We do have inside zone um, counters and the pull and lead. Um, we'll see how much time we have um, to be able to show those clips as well. The only other piece of the thing that we won't show is necessarily the defense on that. But JT, I, I don't know how much you looked at. Statistically, this will be the last piece before we get to the film. I At guess. the defense, uh, yeah, none, zero. Okay, and so I did, and I really just looked at um, 
what the um, top coverages were that he was actually running all of last year and the number one coverage, which would be a little bit different for us, right, would be um, cover four. He played quarters uh, most of the time, about 30% of the time it was quarters. Uh, I did watch some of the film. I hate, I'm sorry that I didn't get the, the film up for you to be able to show it to you. JT, you probably want to take a peek at it when you can because it's a real aggressive four, though. That scared the heck out of me because those safeties set real flat-footed and real close, so the post was always like Hmm. one-on-one. Well, I want to see because, you know, quarters is kind of my thing now. Um, Yes. So I'll, I'll be sure to study that. Yeah, I love it, too. I love a cover four. I'm not uh, – it just – I was shocked to see how aggressive the safeties were. They were true run fillers. You know, it's similar to what kind of what you're doing, right? And they would – but it, they turned it into a pattern match like you would do in cover mm-hmm. three. So, they were, a lot of times, they, you know, teams would know that. They were trying to get corners on the safeties or overs, and they would just end up just taking it and kind of eating it up and – they basically used a pro concept, the same thing we did when I was with the Cowboys and the Packers and everywhere else. Corners, you got to make your money. If the safety is going to be aggressive in this run, they're going to be late. They'll shield you and try to make the ball throw over your head if they're late, but you better cover the post. <laughs> um, so that's oh, yeah. basically I mean, yeah, that's that's my rule. Hey, if it's a post by number one, that's your problem. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's so, not a me problem. Yeah, so you got to have some pretty good corners um, to be able to do that. The second coverage was cover three. Um, it just looked like cover three. Not nothing. Uh, it was about 26% uh, is what I have here. And so that was um, – it was still pattern match. It was. It didn't look like just let everybody run through the zone. They yeah, were really – Not a not a country cover three, as uh, I would call it. Yeah, so they were doing that and then – he actually played a little bit more man than I thought. And now again, this they're in a different conference. They're doing certain things, so the percentages and all that stuff might change once you come into the SEC. Um, but he played man about eighteen percent of the time. Um, after that, everything else kind of fell down. There wasn't a whole lot of combo coverage. There wasn't a whole lot of other stuff um, with it. So um, it could look very different for a secondary. So when we were talking about, we we're gonna. I'm sure we're going to get asked about on what does the secondary, who is the secondary coach and all that kind of stuff. It's a different feel from what Nick Saban has been running for years. Um, if he sticks with the same type of, of things, because quarters is totally, well, I'd say totally different than what, how we've been playing at Bama over the past few years. Right. Would you agree with that or? Yeah, I mean, I think we've kind of, uh, I think we kind of dabble in quarters a little bit, um, but you know, Rip Liz three has always been um, Saban's staple. So, but you know, as times change, you got to start your percentages start to change of what you what you run and what you need to run, and personnel kind of dictates a little bit of that too. So, yeah, okay. All right, well, is there any other glaring thing you feel like you need to say before we get into this film? Um, yes, because I was, like I said before, there were there were some QB runs that I was trying to find, and I was shocked because a lot of the QB runs were not actually QB runs. What it was was Wildcat. A ton of Wildcat. Oh no, well, I didn't. I didn't watch any of those. Yeah, so they they would they line up and then motion Penix out and bring a receiver in. It, it could it could have been anybody. It, sometimes it was a, a receiver. Sometimes it was a running back. You know, it was just organized chaos is the way I would say it. Because they would line up one way, then you then they'd shift, and then they'd motion, and then next thing you know, it's a direct snap to the running back. And of course, it's still inside zone, but now you got somebody else with their hands on the ball. There's there's a lot of things they like to do. They will give you a lot of different looks. Um, and as you you were talking about with Penix, a lot of checks being made at the line, trying to get them into the right spot and the right formation, all those different things. So um, the the QB room is going to have their work cut out 
a little bit offensively because they're they're going to have the expectation is that they're going to have to be a general on the field. I think at least that's what we saw. Now Penix is a Heisman finalist and whatnot, so you can give that to him. Um, Penix also played for DeBoer, I think, at Indiana, so it wasn't like his first time in the offense. So there, there's all kind of um, there's all kind of different things that all the quarterbacks are going to have to figure out over the next next couple of years. Yes, that's right. So um, it'll be fun to watch over the spring when spring football gets here and what that actually looks like. Uh, but let's go ahead and get to uh, this. And I, I, we, we apologize. We're asking, like, uh, what play is next and all this kind of stuff um, because we really put all this stuff together on a whim, right? They announced it on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> they announced it on Friday. <laughs> we do our shows on Wednesday and we weren't even doing a show this Wednesday. This was this was the week off. So um this all kind of came together pretty fast. Yeah, it did. So we hope you guys appreciate that. Uh we hope you appreciate it so much that you will go ahead and uh, subscribe to our channel and give us a like because it did take us a minute to try to get to um a lot of this stuff, grab this data, try to find the film that we thought would be relevant. Um, and things of this nature. So we went to work uh, for you guys to be able to talk about this because we know how important it is for us to be very good at this. So this is uh, Washington in the purple. The first thing you need to see already, and I thought this was interesting, is because they're already showing a, a quad unbalanced set. <laughs> you know, um, I don't think it ends up there. I can't remember. Um, but you see the stressors that you're already well, putting on. Them. Is it is it fair to call this quads? Because the running back is still strong. Like there's oh, there are what, five. What people would it be here. five? Well, what would you call that? We only have well, a well. You you fifth. you can't you can't do that, right? That's not <laughs> this guy. Uh, let me let me. That guy is not eligible. That's wrong. Well. This guy is. So. It is quads in the sense of that's one, this is two, that's three, there's four, and this is the fifth eligible receiver backside. But, you know, you come out and you see this, that's uh, – you better know how to align. I'll say that. That's right, because you actually could snap it that way. Um, okay, so that that's the first thing. I thought that hit me um, – right up in the face really fast just seeing this and the amount of times i saw stuff like this was kind of interesting all right so let it run i believe this is an rpo um that i yes so you know, he'll have to run that back to you the best that he can so you can see there was a puller that went to the top when we were talking about this oh uh, yeah there was uh, two pullers gt yeah. yeah two pullers so he could have actually handed this to the running back um and let him go, which would have seemed like it would have been a good play. And then you see the second piece of where the, the other number, who would be the number two and number three position type people are going to to block, and they got a, a bubble screen, <laughs> essentially by number four or an out. So you talking about stresses. You remember when we talked about the linebackers all the time, trying to figure yeah, out who, yeah, which way they're going to go? <laughs> Because, yeah, again, you know, what are your keys, right? You, this guy, this guy, it's like you better be looking at your guards, and one of those guards is pulling, so you better follow him, probably yelling at this dude that your guy's pulling, um, and then you got these four, you know, to handle. Five, because they're. Yeah. <laughs> the other. Well, so yeah, yeah I mean, I don't, I don't know who they're they're playing here. Whoever it is, they got to tackle better. But as far as just like misdirection and eyes getting to the right place, you're putting those linebackers in a bind. Yes, and you see him looking yeah, like go he, back. He, 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 he ain't even yeah, move. He, he's not even <laughs> he ready because he's trying to like there's five dudes over here. <laughs> Circle the guy so everybody can see it. It's kind of funny because the, the play is snapped and he's just standing there looking at the safety. The safety's screaming at him. It's the guy on the five-yard line right in the middle of the field. Um, 
check him out when the play starts. It's kind of funny to me. You can see him looking around. His hands are up. And he's just standing there looking yeah, back. Now he's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so I'm I'm talking about him like, hey, you supposed to be following his guard, and he's not doing that because he's talking to safety. <laughs> Yeah, he I just mean, fell off. Really? He probably he probably would have went the other way. Anyway, yeah, I'm saying he really, really he, he's only in the play because he had his head turned. <laughs> because he had his head turned, <laughs> and, then and he, he missed the tackle down. anyway. That's uh, that's crazy. So that's fun, but that's another one where the quarterback has to make a decision here, right? Um, all right, I put this in here because um, I got a couple of these in here. This this one is well, first of all, they end up in what they would call quads, even though he's in motion over there. So there's four over there. The part that I want you to see is number five at the bottom. Nope, is going to do. Back. That's, all, that's on me. No, it's okay. He's going to, um, this is what you would call a mesh route. So I want to show you this here, what they did at Fresno, and then how they did it at Washington. So they're crossing, they're trying to rub, and it is the quarterback's job to read the linebacker or the safety. In this case, you can see one of them chasing those guys. So he should know right now he's going to be looking to the left to throw the ball. Number five probably is most likely going to be open. If he is, but he threw the ball to the other guy. <laughs> right? Should have threw the ball to five, mm -hmm. like right now. This is something we used to run at Shelton all the time. Uh, Coach Mark Malcolm was very good at this. We ran this 100 different ways with who crossed and who meshed and where the dig came from and all that kind of stuff because it's very hard to do um, because you either got to take the crosser or you got to worry about the dig behind or you got someone going deep. It's the same thing um, here. So the reason why I put it in there, what's up, John Hart? Good to see you. I miss you, man. I was just talking to uh, Rob Libold about you as well. Okay, so JT, I just wanted to throw that in just because it was quads again but they add the same type of concept in there. All right. This one. Well, this is one you can explain your set here when you were talking about what Trey, difference between Trey and Trips. And yeah. Um, so Trips, at least in my vernacular, Trips means three wide receivers, like three wide receiver bodies. Trey means one of those guys in the, the on the trip side is a tight end so this guy being a tight end uh just semantics on trey versus trips so you know whether there's a tight end in the game or not um they've also got what looks like a tight end on the back side so look at this we, we say they don't actually run a lot of uh 21 personnel but here that's a is. pop. That's a pop quiz. You just gave the answer. I was going to ask him what personnel is oh. that. <laughs> See, maybe that's what we got to rehearse sometimes. Uh, <laughs> no, we don't rehearse. That's not us. That's not Tink Stick. But, um, one of the things that we need to that we have to think about as a defense is even though this is trips, you know, we keep talking about quads. Like the back is still over here. <laughs> There's yeah. still four people that you have to cover on one side of the field. Um, so for anybody who is just kind of like watching the game, trying to figure out um, how offenses or how defenses work, um, it's it's pretty simple. Like the, the game. That's because you're good at math. I don't know. You can say it's pretty simple. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not even, gotta, not even going to You got a double major in math. math like I'm not even going to the math part. The thing is, the office's job is to exploit space. They want to create space, and it's the defense's job to restrict space. That is really the name of the game of football. How can the offense make space, create space, and how can the defense um, restrict it? So... What you kind of want to look for is, yes, how many people are on one side of the field versus the other side of the field? Um, where are the stacks and bunches? So I would call this a stack. This is kind of a stack if you want to. You can call it a bunch, whatever. Um, point is, though, look where this dude is standing. And yes. the space... 
out here. This is on this shaded area out here. That's that's the space that we think that at least pre-snap without any kind of uh post game or you know game plan stuff. If you're a corner or a safety, you're kind of thinking, hey man, something either this dude's probably trying to come over here or we're trying to do something like this. We're trying to exploit the space. We want to draw everybody in so that we can pull somebody back out. You um, sure you didn't watch the plays? Before? I have not seen this play yet. <laughs> 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 mm, okay. All right. I, I know he used to cheat in class too. No, a little come on bit. Now. But anyway, look at that deep over. I could have sworn you just said something about that. That's the only reason I said it. I didn't know that. But now you got to look because. Go back to the beginning because I need you for you to see who's out there on the twenty yard line on the, at the top. You know, did how, the back go the other direction? Yes, that's sir, crazy. Now, I've, look, I know that's not like shocking <laughs> to most people, but like that doesn't happen very often. That's not a. <laughs> that's no, crazy. you're talking. You're, you're talking about conflict. So if you look at that corner up there, he has another guy coming to the tight end at the top. The nub guy mm -hmm. actually ends up comes up and goes out. So, uh, right, he kind of stems in, but I think he goes back up. Right, so that corner would have been in problems over there with, between those two. But they had another guy. So, and for me, JT, when I look at this type of play, it's like a a weak flood, right? So you had the short guy, the middle guy, then you had the deep guy. They just got to it in a very unique. Yeah. Um Another thing I kind of forgot, you know, again, talking about space, you know, let's get to the pre-snap alignment, right? I was talking about the space down here, uh, but, again, w there's more green grass right there. Yeah, yeah, that's what they got, too. And so, you know, these are beaters, but you got all kind of ways to be able to throw the ball, as you can see. that He had options a release, a check down to get it to the back if he wanted to. He could take the deep shot. But they kind of covered the middle up. So he had both, you know, like you said, w which one do you do Yeah, you I mean, this, this looks like three, right? Except what we were talking, this kind of looks like country cover three to me. Just drop back in the zone. And uh, unfortunately, that corner is late getting out. So this is the what we were calling the dagger or the four beater. So the last little piece about this one you got to see and why it's so hard is if you actually right here, JT, if you look at the guy on the 39 yard line at the bottom part of the deal, he's actually running an in route now. He actually probably could have took this guy because there's nobody in the middle of the field either. So he had a lot of options, <laughs> you know, to to hit and particularly if he throws it on time because that guy's standing there he's yep. freaking yep there's space, the space all over the place you got you know he's here 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 right Ooh, that was a pretty terrible circle there in the yeah i don't know what what is that a uh, uh, pothole you, you're drawing up hey, on the field look, i'm, I'm drawing i'm here? drawing with the with the mouse you know and I don't, I don't get to stand up here like the telestrators on, you know, when uh, on ESPN or NFL Network where they just get to run back to the TV and use their finger to, to draw stuff. Hey, by the way, what's the Apple Cup? I just happened to see that. On the, uh, the, that uh, is the Washington, Washington State's um, rivalry. They play for the oh. Apple Cup. Okay. So is that really there or is that um, one of those laid over TV things that we. <laughs> no, that's, that's actually there. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Uh, what's up, Mr. Whitman? Appreciate you. Uh, okay, so that was uh, the dagger. You can go ahead and go to the next one unless you got something on there. Um, next, thing we need to cover it's just it's an aggressive throw, uh, which we like to see, um, as well. When you got some dudes, they got some speed, they can get all the way across the field, even though they cut it down. Uh, I don't know if there's a pause on this one or not. I had to, we had to yeah. I'm just take, letting it roll uh, right now. Okay, so this is actually a Fresno. Yeah, back to Fresno film. Um, take lots of bodies in here, tighten, tighten it up. Uh, I think this is a pass route. 
similar kind of concept. You got the guy with JT was just talking about exploiting the other side of the field, the areas. But if you look at it, the concepts are kind of the same. They're, they're right? the same. They're yeah, the same. You know, it's a, it's a, you can call it a levels concept if you want to. You're just trying to, you're trying to put somebody in a bind. Um, and if you kind of got a beat on your game plan and you're looking at this pre snap and you're thinking, okay, it's either, it might be one or three, whatever, and you know this guy's taking off, um, and you got a one high look, that guy better, probably better run with him. Um, this, and you know that this backer, well, maybe, maybe this backer could be this one, but one of these two guys is going to be responsible for getting underneath here. Um, so. You still got those four guys at the top. Right. I mean, it's the same thing with but all kind of hit. As the OC, you're like, all right, so let's assume that this guy's going in, going to the flat. How do we put him in conflict? Well, if you show him, if you show him play action, right, and you get his, you give him, you give him some kind of flow. He's got to step up and respect it, and then you know, does. you got enough room right behind, behind him it. if you can make a good throw. That's right. So. Great design. Got to love it, right? I mean, it's exciting to see, but you still got to have the guy that can throw the ball and put it uh, right where you need it. Okay. Well, I want to go back to this one. Uh, I think somebody was asking if this was uh, 41. Personnel? Yeah. And no, not 20, quite. 20. There's there's two, two receivers. So... Um, you got you know, what does he say is the first number? What is the first number? You, you're asking number me, you want me to wait for no, somebody no, no, in the I, chat. No, yeah, I was, uh, was basically prompting the chat because I, I you probably can see it, and maybe you can ask, hey, you know, there's a quick quiz by you. You can do that. Hey, you know, when you look at those numbers, what does the first number of personnel mean versus the second? Yeah, well, got to so memorize now, that because you'll forget. Yeah. Uh, now I got. I have to pause for dramatic effect because Chad is always slightly behind. Um, so we'll see if anybody puts it in there. But okay, doesn't look like that. it. But um, we'll see. We'll see who's right. There we go. BJ Swope, first one in the chat. Tight ends. Yeah, yes, right. First number is tight ends. It means the second number is the back. So um, all we need to do is count this up. We got a center, guard, tackle, one tight end. Guard, tackle, two tight ends, one back. So, 21. There we go. Nice. Now, I hate this. This is a pet peeve of mine just because uh, the lineman is wide receiver. You can't tell me he's not covering up that other Oh, guy. he totally yeah, is. Yeah, he just, is. Totally just, I was like, I like, come on, man. I know they let him get away with it and all that, but well, that's a he tackle. Didn't go out, though. That's a tackle. Yeah. No, that was a really a tackle. So that means the other guy's up top. There's two. Is off? Uh, so you got the center at the wrong spot. The center is on the hash. Oh, mark. the center is on the hash. Yep. There we go. Okay. Guard, tackle, tight end, tight end. Yeah, there you One, go. Two. My bad. My bad. All right. Good deal. Okay. But anyway, there's the uh, concept there. Uh, did you make your point? Yeah, you made yeah. your point. That was good. Great question, too, by someone. Uh all right, so the uh, next clip. Um, all right, so I, I added this one in here because sometimes you want to, as uh, JT was did a, a start talking about how you put people in conflict, and sometimes things are kind of mirrored. On both sides, the the coaches will say, um, "I don't know." Give the quarterback the option to pick which side he wants to throw to. Would that be fair, right, JT? So sometimes, oh, hold on. I was reading chat. Got to give Bama Jeff seventy nine his props. He's he's already he's already locked in twenty one personnel. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. That's although what I'm talking about. that could be a running back. Yeah, I was gonna say although I think you're wrong here. That could be a running back. <laughs> I think this well, is 12 now, personnel. Now, that's a problem, too. So, let me say this. As, as a coach, so thank you, um, Jeff. As a coach, I would always draw on the board with circles, right? So, forget numbers. Mm -hmm. I could draw this formation up and say, 
what personnel is this? And the answer on when you're looking at a whiteboard, they should be, well, I don't know. Because that's where you, you got to have rules, though. You got <laughs> you to you, you have rules. <laughs> because you could draw this formation up with two right receivers uh-huh. up here, two tight ends at the top. Or that other guy could actually be a wide, uh, wide receiver. So it could be 11 personnel, and it looked exactly the same mm-hmm. on the on the, on the the board. But anyway, I'll get back to my point here is when you're saying, so we used to do that too. If we had someone that you did, you wanted to make sure the quarterback kind of look and kind of count and say, okay, I'm going to run a uh, bubble on each side, or I'm going to run that, what did you call that one route, the, the little C route? Um uh, the Carolina yeah, route, corner, the Carolina routes to both sides, and you're really just trying to look to see how they line up and try to figure out uh, what it's going to be. That's not necessarily what they run here, but when you look at it, I thought it was interesting again because essentially they're giving the quarterback two ways to to pick a side. So he's looking right now and saying, "Where are my best options?" So when you when JT his play for you, uh, if you look at the bottom, you get a bubble. Right now, just run it back. If you look at the top, those two guys are essentially running the same play, the tight mm-hmm. end and whatever that other guy is. He's backing up. He's looking kind of thick. He's probably tight end. I don't know. So it looked like it would have worked on both sides, right? Again, yeah, if I you're think they would have had a tougher time. Uh, short field, always tougher. Yeah, I think they would have had a tougher time up top because uh, they, you still would have had to make a guy miss. Whereas down here at the bottom, just because of the cushion, you don't have to make a guy miss. You just need to run forward and fall. Well, see, and that, yes, and I think that's where you, where I was trying to make the point to uh, help. Thank you for helping me make that point that quarterback got to see that on alignment at the beginning too. Because they only had two choices: is a bubble to the bottom or a bubble to the top. <laughs> There's nobody else going out for a route. I guess he could have handed it off, you know, um, but he didn't even decide to do that. So um, it's again, it's trying to put people in conflict and try to find the space. And when you have athletes, which Alabama will, the key is to try to get them the ball in their hand as fast as possible and let them do their things and make people miss. Um, like this sometime, not all the time, um, but it's an easy way to get people on the stat sheet, get them involved. Um, and just know you can get it out there to them fairly quick because this is a, this is an RPO, right? And there's no pullers. They're, they're running inside zone. I think, mm-hmm. you know, with just a tag of, or they're just saying, Hey, every time we run inside zone, you're running bubbles. Um, and then the quarterback has a right to, to throw it. Right? Yeah. Okay. Is that that first round of uh, yeah, I think plays? That's, that should yeah, be yeah. all. Oh, there's one more. Play. Looks like there's one more. True all trips. Right. Back a set week this time. So yeah. when we ask somebody, if you were just looking at it, now we're in the in the chat, what kind of personnel are we looking at? This would be different for them. What would they think it is? You know, I know we don't know. Everybody on there, but I know what I would say it is. Anyway, so let's see what they uh, say. Okay, so this is uh, probably my other mesh route that I was getting ready to tell you. So sometimes there's indicators like this. Like JT was talking about, hey, when you condense formation, he already drew up those um, boxes, those rectangles towards the outside. Hey, hold on. Wait a minute. Uh, I think we need to correct ourselves. I think we, I think that we told everybody that first number was tight end. Twenty one is uh, the first one is backs first. Twenty one. Yes, I think I think that at least I said it. I think I said that the tight end number was first, which is not right. Yeah, Twenty one personnel is two backs, one tight end. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Ten is one back, no tight end. One Ten back, is what no this tight is. There's no tight end. You give it away to answer. I know, but we just we just confused, like I don't know, five hundred and sixty people. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. Well, our bad on that. 
You're not paying attention. Okay, so it's back to the mesh route concept because what he said here, you start to think what are you going to do with the areas to the outside of the field or to the middle. So on this play right here, if you start to see the – you can call them crossers or meshers or basically – if you're a man-to-man, -man, you're going to crash to each other because those two wide receivers are getting run right next to each other. So it's almost a man-beater, right? But again, quarterback, if you look at this, JT, we ran this so much at Shelton. I absolutely loved it because that crosser from the top or the mesh guy or whatever, with the under route, he's going to be wide open. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure. I mean, you already know right now if you're the quarterback, he's – He's supposed to look at the guy that was down and see at the snap, where does he go? He chases that guy across the field. It's an automatic throw it to the the guy from the top, opposite on his back, and there he is. I mean, just – it's easy, as JT was saying. It's pretty doggone easy to to see. Okay, so we're going to the run game. Yeah, we're the, the run game now. The next one. Yeah, so – Started uh, you, you started off not with inside zone. <laughs> nah, you know. Nah, you know. <laughs> First one is, is it, what is this, double G counter? Is that what this is? Well, it's probably just the way that I had to put it in there to cut it up. I just put numbers in. Mm -hmm. Something you taught me, not necessarily. Wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm so just, the center pulled. I, that's, you got to be, you got to be one athletic son of a gun to, Snap the ball and then pull. Kelsey. Kelsey 2.0. That'll help you get drafted when you can do that. Yeah. So they had some pretty athletic um linemen. I need to say that. They they were they had a good size and they're big and all that. But what I did notice is that they were very athletic. How many times do you see a whole lot of look at this tackle just coming around? Just doing the rap. That, that just basically just kind of jump cut himself. It, yeah, this dude, that dude's a Freaking athlete. I mean, you don't even hardly see tackles with towels hanging off their ass. <laughs> <laughs> like he's the, the, the typical the swag Look at it. Uh, that 55. I mean, that dude, that, you know, if he's looking for guys like Man, that. Man, he played fullback in high school. That's what that was. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that that's a you know, a different piece. Um, do those type of guys fit in the SEC and uh, things of that kind of nature? I don't. I don't know. You got to be a pretty physical kind of specimen. Now, they did end up in the national championship, um, but didn't fare so well when it came to, you know, other pieces. All right, so this is the, you know, what we can talk about. You got a puller and a lead. Uh, still got four people up at the top again. It's just a, mm -hmm. you know. So just nah, a that's, game, just, huh? that's definitely know, just a, a sweep. It's a sweep. Um but, you know, the linemen are all doing the same thing. Again, you're not seeing a whole lot of extra um, stuff. This is a pretty big dude for uh, Fresno, big fella. Well, I'm going to say, they did some pretty good. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> dude's looking large. Uh, that's how we need to look at. Uh, maybe we can get uh, JP2 some white oh, helmets. Oh, I got I to gotta put this comment on screen. I got to find. Brian Green says we got to do 100 push-ups for the confusion. Oh, well. I give you ten. <laughs> Just think you do the ninety. Hey, well, you know what really is? It was, I've just created extra work because now I'm gonna have to go back and edit this video, and like correct it. How because you gonna do that? because you know you put some words up there because everybody be talking. Oh, about I have to because you know that you giving bad info. Well, yeah, I'm giving bad info, but like there have been plenty of people that will. I don't understand it. So if I if if the shoe fits, I'm sorry. But there are people who will go back and they will watch this and they will make comments under the video as if it's live and they will like ask questions. <laughs> and it's recorded and we did it a week ago and then they'll have like a string of like five or six comments. So, you know, just to go ahead and alleviate that, I'm going to need to, I might just have to cut it out or whatever. All right. That sounds good. Okay. Uh, more motion. Again, this is your. That's the, that's the play that you wanted first. <laughs> this is the play that JT wanted first. It's basically a split zone. Um, yeah. Inside zone. Inside zone. So, again, it's, it's, it's a very common play. It's not new. He just was very um, 
deliberate about running it. You're trying to get a double team, which is probably the center and the guard at this case. You're trying to get some movement. Blocking down, there's, there's a pretty big hole. The jump cut that we talked about with Blake Corum and all that kind of stuff, you know, there there it is. You just – it's pretty good. It's nice, easy play. So I'm going to ask you this um, just because I – what do you think? Do you like the inside – as a running back, do you like the inside zone better or the outside zone? Inside zone. The inside zone's easier. Okay, so can you explain the difference in aiming points – when you're trying to run an inside zone versus the inside zone, outside zone for yeah, running back. So let me let me go back to. Yeah, well, you can draw it up. Yeah, so, and this might not hold true for every offense, but at least when I was playing, this is my aiming point for inside zone um, was inside foot of the guard. Right. If we're going backside, well, we're always going. You can't run inside zone this way like this so um inside foot of the guard and then you're looking for cut back in the usually in the a gap sometimes it's all the way back but you know that's why that's why good running backs make the big money because they'll they'll find a cut back all the way back outside zone um your aiming point goes from here to here where now your cut back is going to be in uh, B gap or front side A gap. I always found it easier to take a shorter step and then maybe even just more fun to come to come back backside because you know you've got sometimes you get fast flow. Everybody's everybody's running this way and then you can get that cut back outside zone. For me, you're still kind of cutting back into the you're not cutting back against the flow you're trying to find a you're trying to knife it mm -hmm. more like uh what was that game Fro frogger right traffic's all going this way you can't like cut back and just avoid the backside of traffic you still gotta like weed through uh read through some of that stuff so i've always liked inside zone better than outside zone but I've always I, I got really good at um trying to find the cutback and knifing it up. So um both of those I think are easier and take less trust in your alignment than counter trap. Well, my least favorite is trap. I as a running back, I hate it. You afraid they're gonna miss the Absolutely. Travel or what? <laughs> Especially the short trap. It's like wait, we just gonna leave we just gonna leave the, the three tech right here. And like mm -hmm. I'm just expecting like no man. Like some of the three techs that I played against were animals. Well, okay. Well I hope you've gotten over it by now. So anyway, I just asked that just for a good measure. Um to, to see what you actually like. Because you know, I know there's still the front side piece and you'll see it kinda happen. Sometimes the front side opens up and it just kind of runs straight and it looks like a dive or something the other way. But this is, you know, a good, good looking play. And then when you add the piece of the quarterback pull, so <clears throat> I don't necessarily like, I mean, he pulled it some, Penix. I guess if you went and looked at the RPOs or actually how many times he actually pulled it, it's very minimal. Most of the time he was throwing the bubble off of it you know, or some type of play action. But you always got that piece, what you see right here, where the quarterback could keep the ball and run it. Um, and that's where you're saying how, you know, how does Milrow actually fit into these type of things? Because there would be a ton of hand it to the run it back, quarterback keep it, or throw it to one of those wide receivers um, out there, right? Same thing. It's, it's RPO. Right, hand it to the running back, quarterback, keep it. Or if you want to see if you run it back, if they got the bubble built in. Oh, yeah, you're going to need the wide the wide for that. Yeah, where he could actually throw it to, I don't know if you can circle that dude up there, uh, the number three wide receiver. Or he could actually throw it. So, uh, I don't know, man. It just, uh, it's a lot. You just got to... You know, it's counting. Is what you said. Who who's who's in the worst position, and how do we make it? Then you have fun off of that, right? Then you mm -hmm. got fake fake RPOs or what do you call it? Fake bubbles, and then the 
wide receiver runs up the uh, up the field if you're jumping too high. So it's a uh, shoot. This quarterback here, he could have kept it a lot longer. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, right. But you know, I I don't know I don't know what the uh, what Not the rumor, rules probably. are because. <coughs> you know, oh, we could have said lock it. Yeah, I was talking to our offensive coordinator. Um, you know, back when we had a quarterback that was way more, uh, like, he he had never played quarterback. Right, he was just an athlete that we stuck back there, um, and we would run that kind of read option stuff, and he would hand it off all the time. And I said I was telling him that one way that we should start thinking about it would be, you as offensive coordinator, you need to tell. You're, you you should give your quarterback rules basically on who should get the ball. And I don't mean that, like, read this guy, hand it, or give it. More like you could set up the structure to where the quarterback is going to keep the ball more times than the running back. So what I said was, if you want the running back to keep the ball, you should have your quarterback's mindset is hand the ball off unless you think he's going to get tackled. If you think he's going to get tackled, pull it. Take your chances. But if you want the quarterback to keep the ball, you tell him to read the end, or whoever their, their read key is, and you say, hey, quarterback, if you think that guy can tackle you, give it away. Give it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so now if you have the athletic quarterback and you want him to pull it more often, you know, you just tell him, your your read is not can the not can the running back get some yardage. It's can that guy tackle you? And if you don't think he can tackle you, then keep it yourself. Yeah, man, I absolutely love that because when we first um, got here, we had a quarterback who, you know, you have your read. If the guy goes down, pull it. But we didn't really didn't want him to pull it because our quarterback couldn't run. So you know, by the time the linebacker, as you can see, this linebacker could be looking for the quarterback or he could be looking for the running back. Um, if he can get to your quarterback, um, that's not quite as athletic. It's not a good deal. You want to have the running back make that one yard. I'm thinking of short yardage in particular. So we had to start adding lock, regardless mm-hmm. of what the read was. We said, no, you're handing it to the running back. <laughs> you know, um, you don't even have an option. Okay. Here we go. Uh, I'm gonna guess this is some kind of counter or pin and pull. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. You can call this counter, or you can call it power. Uh, shoot, or does it even Got matter? It, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess, I guess we'll look at the, the running back. The running back is his steps. I don't know. I mean, he's going straight downhill, right? I call it yeah. Power, but yeah. Yeah, who cares? Who yeah, cares? It doesn't matter. It's a physical run. Is the base thing that I want you to um, be able to see. You know, um, they didn't have a whole lot of guys to block um, down here because they're all slanted to the. Yeah, they're slanting the wrong side. Yeah, right? they're slanting the wrong way, so it kind of made for it. But what I did like, and it's the discipline that you got to have for your running backs to be able to stay inside them pullers. Uh, and go, um, which we want our quarterback to do a little bit more instead of mm-hmm. trying to bounce it. Probably one more clip. Yep. And so I did this one just for you. Look at that formation again, first of all. Uh, yeah, it's, this, man, <laughs> like, game planning against this sucks. Yeah. Because cause now, like, and it's a so normal it's a normal personnel group, and this is twenty I'm sorry, twelve personnel. Didn't you say that before? I think you oh, I think yeah. you drew it up right. We just said it wrong. Yeah, we said it wrong. Right. Uh so this is twelve personnel, except again, like the thing that we have to as a defense that we're gonna have to look at it is that guy's not eligible. He's on the line. Oh. This guy's eligible. Right. Yes, and you don't have to declare in high school. Think about yeah, or college. Or college, yeah, I'm sorry. The NCAA Uh, rules, you don't have to declare. In the pros, you would have to say whatever number he is. 72 is eligible. Um, I don't even think you – you you can't even make him eligible in high school because – or college. Because of the number. Because of the number, yeah. You'd have to throw it backwards 
to him. Um, but you got that going on. It was like that guy can't even go out for a pass anymore. But then you got the extra gap, right? So you have A, B, C, D, and E gap. So now at least what I've done in the past was say that guy is not the center. This guy's the center. So your three technique actually needs to be way out here, which it looks like that's kind of what they do. I don't, you know, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, they went shade five. But they nine. you gotta you gotta shift this this way with the line. You probably gotta walk somebody up. I don't know where their corner went. I guess maybe they went like a Connie Connie and moved the corner over here and just kept the linebacker over here on this dude. I'd have faith yep. in your linebacker to do that, but hey. Um And then this is what happens when you hit play. Uh, you say and you slide everybody right, and then all of a sudden these pullers start coming to the <laughs> to the short side yeah. with a lead running back and if you got a quarterback who can run. So go ahead and hit play. And you see you got pullers, you got leaders, and then you got a quarterback that's keeping the ball and getting it up in there. Uh, so it's just a lot to think about. So what am I saying about all of this and with the the – the plays, uh, you better be ready to line up and see a whole lot of crap from uh, from this offensive staff. Um, you got to be do it back to the top. Yeah. Um, so you're going to be very disciplined about lining up, or you're going to can be exposed in a lot of ways, run or pass. Right. So I'm excited about that piece. If you're asking me about it, I, I have no issues with any of this. I think it's good. I think it's going to be a little bit different in the type of runs, that, like we said, and unless he adapts a little bit just to the people that we have and, you know, how much different is the SEC running game versus, you know, the Pac-12. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So I scraped four questions. Um I don't know that we have good answers for any of them. But here we go. One from John. Uh, John if, you if Grubb is the OC, does he bring in Will Rogers' QB who transferred to Washington from Mississippi State and just went to the portal again? This assumes he thinks Milrow cannot run his offense. Um, no. I I don't think so. I don't. They got like 14 running backs on the roster right now. Or not running backs. Uh, quarterbacks on the roster like they don't, they don't need Will Rogers. Well, yeah, and I think you also have to ask yourself to, um, you know, what does a player really want to do? Does he want to try to step into something like this, unless you come, you know, ready made like beyond Sanders, where you're saying, "Hey, this is my quarterback, and now it's his son." Um, but I think, you, like you said, JT hit it. I, I think you got so much talent already there that you basically have to tell someone to beat it. <laughs> you know, probably. Uh, from the team, or or expect someone to transfer when maybe, you start. Maybe, uh, maybe he does come to Alabama just because he's he's trying to angle for a GA position. He's just trying to he he's angling that GA play. <laughs> I like your positive outlook and your uh, how you spin that a little bit. That'd be good. Um, but you know, either way, I, I think. The transfer portal, I don't know how many questions you got there in there about that. You know, well, what we is this? got one. I'll let him jump the line since we're talking about it. Have you have you guys discussed if – oh, maybe I should just put it on screen. Have you guys discussed if DeBoer was able to keep 007 with Bama? I have no idea. Yeah. Well, no, I, I, have we discussed it? No. no. The answer is we have no idea. Yeah. Uh, we, we don't I, – I, I, the personnel – stuff um so one of the things we're going to do this off season is really dive into what does the off season look like and it's going to be a little bit uh i think it's going to be very telling um right because this is going to be very critical for for coach now who does he keep from the class that just signed from december right what is it going to look like for what he needs for the class that's going to have to sign on february the 7th how much if any, is he in the the portal? Who ends up actually jumping into the portal at a lot of later date? He's having to recruit, talk, watch film, figure out what he wants to do, um, and really see, you know, all these things that we're talking about here, meeting with his staff. He's still got to hire people. Good Lord. You know, the whole 
good bit and try to figure out, okay, what is this thing going to look like in April? What do I really want to put in? And do I have the, the pieces that he needs to be successful? Of course, we're all saying, hey, there's already talent there. There's tons of four stars, five star guys. What else do you need? It still has to fit with your mindset on how you call plays and what you run, right? Yep. Okay. Next question. All right. Uh, do you think Milro will be QB? Uh, it's all an opinion. So when you're saying think, my, my, my think is that he is the QB until he proves he can't, or unless he cannot prove that he can run the system that mm-hmm. this coach wants. I think you come in and say, hey, you're our dude. I mean, he's proven it, right? He's one of the, the best pieces in there, but there's a lot of stuff is that we've talked about uh, in the previous segment about um, being able to read, get the ball in the right places, knowing where the weaknesses of the defense are, getting the ball in the right spot and on the right time. Um, so if you think about how this was for Milro at the beginning of the year, you know, uh, uh, again, I, I absolutely love Milro. That's not... Uh, Please hear me say that. I think he is uh, a wonderful quarterback. I think he has some things that he still need to work on. Um, I'm hoping he's spending some time on accuracy and and throwing the ball and and standing, stepping up into the pocket and hitting the shots that he needs to. And I know he is. That's that's, kind of, that's the kind of guy that he is. So I think he goes in the spring as the number one guy. I think he ends up, you know, probably being the starter for the team unless he just has something where it's just not meshing and clicking uh, with the coordinator um, and with coach. Oh, I was on mute. Um, Any thoughts on names for DC? Man, not for me. And again, I'm not talking to anybody about who to hire and who they should be and whatnot, because again, it's a kind of something that I addressed at the beginning. You know, the the head coach has to find the person that he can trust first and foremost, um, but also the coach that he feels can execute what he needs to to do. Um, so as a head coach, I, I guess I was a head coach for 17 years. They had to hire a lot of coordinators. Some of the times I took the guys with me that I trusted and I wanted, and sometimes I knew I was going to have to adjust that they were okay and they were good for me, but the maybe they didn't fit. For instance, I didn't bring um, all of my uh, people over to Kelton Christian, or I ended up making the switch. You know, um, once I got around David Ferris, David Ferris was the coordinator that I hired at uh, Shelton. I knew I needed to have him, or um, yeah, when I came to JP two because he fit my mindset in the mold and he everything that I needed. Um, oh, okay. So I'm gonna throw this in here. Um, two things, because I, I think it ties into exact, I think we can segue into this. Um, the question is, what do you think about T Rob leading, leaving? So please continue your thought about fitting the mold and mindset of new coaches. Yeah, so the the people have to fit into your mindset because we're all kind of built different. We all have certain strengths um, or weaknesses that may not fit with us. And I don't know. I know that with a lot of times there are people that I've trusted and I wanted. So here's the deal. When I I'll just give you the real life story when you're talking about something like this, and then JT can give his point. So when I first got to John Paul to the high school, it, you know they had a a staff there, some of the coaches were really, really good, some wasn't. But I had to make the decision as a head coach of can that guy, based upon me talking to him first, um, will he fit into what I'm doing? And there were some guys that were probably very, very good coaches that I didn't feel like were going to fit with what I'm doing because of how they answer questions and what they were doing and what they were accustomed to, or maybe they didn't know or something with that. So I would have to, I made the decision to be able to let them go. That's not always the case, but you need to remember also that when you are on a staff that has just been 
your coach just left. Sometimes you're not even waiting for what the other head coach wants. You might not even want to um, <laughs> coach with them. Right. Maybe there's something. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, I mean, um, it's a two way street, right? Like just because you want him to stay doesn't mean that he wants to work for you. That's right. Uh, that's right. And sometimes we got to bolt, or maybe now there's another opportunity because they're getting plucked. The coaching staff is getting plucked the same way the kids are in the transfer portal. As soon as Nick Saban said to retire, I promise you some of those guys were getting called immediately mm -hmm. from some other coordinator or head coach saying, hey, what are you going to do? Are you trying to stick this out? Well, you know, what's your contract look like? What is it by? Whatever. Um, and so those two, three days could have been critical without a head coach where you talk to a Kirby Smart or someone is like, hey, man, it's time now. I couldn't get you here before, and my guy just left or whatever. I got a spot. I got you. And a matter of fact, I'm going to throw in a house, and, <laughs> you know, who knows what it is now. You know, well, shoot, I always wanted to get back to Georgia anyway or something. So um, it's very hard to, to speculate on what a coach will do um, because – I mean, shoot, JT's having to deal with it when he's gone through three coaches now at JP2. Yeah, and uh, well, you know, and, and it, we're all different, though, right? Years. Yeah, very. It, it's, yeah, very different. Very, very different. Yeah. So, I mean, he had to make that decision. Do I want to be at the university? And first of all, JT didn't know whether or not Mario Edwards wanted to keep him or if Nick Sheely wanted to, <laughs> you know, keep him because he didn't have to. Um, nope. You know, regardless if you wanted to be there or not, you know. Um, so, uh, anyway. All right. Any more questions in there? Uh, yeah, up? I've got one more. Uh, but I do want to um, – Justin, the Bama Standard Network, um, says the former Alabama defensive lineman Nick Gentry is applying for the D.C. position. Phil Parker and uh, Jim Leonard are top candidates. I – this is just my opinion. I don't think Phil Parker is even entertaining – any anybody i i don't think phil parker is going anywhere that well dude, why do you say that that dude that dude has been um at iowa as a dc for like a decade and he was there as a db's coach even before then like my thought is like if you're gonna be a dc that long and 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 your offense is that bad for that long like dude you just want to stay at iowa like that, that's just your place. That's your home. Now he ain't, he ain't trying to go nowhere. And I think the problems that he would face <laughs> with, uh, and I, the, the territory and things that he's going to have with Alabama and the nuke, like he ain't, this just not, I don't think that's something that he wants to deal with. I think he's very content. I don't think money is a thing for him. I think he just wants to be a DC at Iowa like he's been for the last decade and keep it moving. Okay. Well, all right. Well, you got any last words? We're almost right at 90 minutes. Oh, you got another? Uh, got Yeah, a... but we kind of covered this. Who do you think will be the linebacker? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. And one of the things that I think we would say that we do, and I think JT and I are both kind of the same with this, and I know it's part of the media world. I guess we can call ourselves media, you know, trying to, speculate and um, uh, give topics of who would fit the best. I can say neither one of us are really kind of like that. <laughs> so I'm sorry if you're looking at for us, we're kind of, hey, whoever he hires is what we're going to have to roll with. And we can kind of give our opinion on do we like the dude or, or not, or we can go back and watch film after he's here. But it's extremely hard to do. There was so much speculation about who the head coach is going to be and what do you do. I mean, my, our phones are blowing up. And who, who do you think is going to be and who would you go get? Man, that's just all bar talk and saying why we don't want them, you know, or mm -hmm. why we do want them when there's no real pieces to this. So for us to say who do we think is going to be, I don't know coach at all. I don't. His defense is what I just learned more of now than I knew the whole time. So I then would have to go look and say, well, 
what defensive coordinator likes to run quarters a whole lot and do they run it like this and you know going back and watch film say who actually fits coach's mindset um and it could be somebody from his on the staff at yeah in washington you know I, I i don't know so i don't know sorry we, we just don't we don't speculate too much like that all right well last thing is for all of you guys that are viewing us right now um on the bama standard um please come check us out and also subscribe to us on our main channel which is teague's take i guess i probably should be doing that like every week i don't think we say that enough um but as we said earlier in the show we're trying to get to well i said it in chat chat has long scrolled past that message um we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers on our main channel um what you will find over there is some of our um extra film clips i will cut this up make it shorter so you can just watch the film stuff too um but we're also going to do a q a once we get to a thousand subscribers so um from there you will see me trying to put together a form or something so that you can submit questions to the show uh, so that we can get those answered they can be um, from all kinds of topics from football to grilling to beer and bourbon i guess or <laughs> cigars uh, whatever video That's games too. computers whatever um, chess chess yeah. yeah don't forget about chess, chess. we got those some chess in there <laughs> uh so um you know we appreciate the the support um from you guys um bama jeff 79 yes we are um i guess if you know you know i'm not gonna put the chat up there but yes um so oh. thank you all to us or thank you all um for supporting us and uh come find us on on our on our main channel you'll see some you'll see some extra content sometimes we do some exclusives over there um there is a memorabilia um website if you want uh what you got you got cards you got signed um alabama cards packers cards cowboys cards you got signed jerseys uh you got signed footballs uh that is next oh I do well, not have them on there yet. We had a, a little Christmas special, but now I'm going to start uh, having signed Alabama footballs the, with the script A on it. That will be next. Well, then there you go. Um, that's at millions.co slash George dash Teague, I believe. So yep. um, find that for us. Um, yes, Ben Allen says a great show. Indeed. Roll Tide, fam. Roll Tide. Um, oh. Thank you, guys. Uh, that's all we got um we what's what's next um we're gonna be talking crutes um we're gonna be going through some some highlights and stuff um yeah. talking about some of the guys that have signed i guess we now we have to be a little bit more careful um guys who have signed and like retained so i guess maybe we should wait till after national signing day um because when we had this whole schedule um we didn't have a shakeup like this so stay tuned i guess could change. That's exactly right. So go ahead and mark it, as you said. So we will, I, for those of you that listen to us on the um, Wednesdays, we will not be on on Wednesday the 17th. Our next show will actually be the 24th, JT. Check your calendar, the 24th. Um, and that will give us some time to kind of find out what's going on um, also with the recruiting world, who's there, who isn't, and our, as he said, is – we, it is our take to try to start giving you information about upcoming recruits, what does offseason look like, and maybe showing films with guys that we're actually yeah, maybe looking at now as opposed to <laughs> who actually signed. But I had all of it broken out on the, the people that already signed, so we want to try to show you the huddle film and how they actually fit. But that fit was going to be based upon what Saban and those guys mm -hmm. were doing, and now we got to make sure that this actually – how do they fit into a – Oh. Offensive and defense of the Brewer. Since I still have a captive audience, um, there's a lot of you guys in the chat. And I know we're this is this is like the most southern goodbye, right? We've been talking about how we go in the show for a long time, but I keep thinking about things. Um, I guess just either chat that you're in, just let us know if you have any kind of interest in um, some NFL film breakdown during the offseason while there's no college football around. 
um, or any kind of, uh, I mean, maybe we even just pick like high profile games to break down from, from the college season. Um, you know, I'll take some, see red main, put a rock on thing in there. So if you got any of those, put ones in the chats, I don't know, thumbs up, whatever. Just let us know if you, if you would like that kind of content. Um, cause and maybe that won't be live content, but we can we can definitely record that, put those up for for people to spend their time watching because we enjoy doing it. Great point, great point. We do, we love this part, and so um, and we plan on continuing as much as possible, unless you guys tell us something different. But we want to stay with the film and the analysis and breaking down and giving you the the scoop uh, on what we know there. So uh, roll tide to everybody. Man, it's gonna be it's gonna be good. We shouldn't be panicking, you know, um, or any of that kind of nature. I know we aren't. Um, I will say, and I, you know, if we could find a way for him to make it back to coach here, that we're we're gonna support him. We're gonna have him there. He has the hardest dang job, I think, um, in the in the sports world right mm-hmm. now, trying to follow behind this guy, because because the realistic truth of the matter is is he can't have a down year he can't (laughs) you know or the perception and the perspectives and all this other kind of stuff because comes bad and it's probably even going to be harder just because of the way the conference is going to be set up you got texas coming in now and ou and you got (laughs) other stuff and i don't even know if it would have been realistic i think i've said this on before would bama have been a two loss team next year anyway, just because of the way that the SEC is set up. Could we have lost two games? Yes. I'm saying yes. So if this guy comes in and he loses two games, we can't fall off the cliff and be like, man, we he lost these kind of you know, I'm talking about regular season. Dude. Yeah, um, I mean you, you, because- you just get you just get mad if like those two games are like Vanderbilt and Arkansas. Like, <laughs> then, then maybe you got Oh, the he out. <laughs> he's out but you know so he's got to get to work he's got to he's got some serious grinding he's got to shake a lot of hands he's got to do a lot of talking a lot of stuff and i mean he's just new he's in tuscaloosa and it's going to be grand he's got to recruit his own kids again um i'm not saying i'm giving him the benefit of doubt or just giving him a pass underrated comment right there oh yeah for sure so you know, it's just the guy's got a a big, big task. And I, I can't imagine what his nights are going to be like for the Knicks. Yo, Relayer56, what does this even mean? Here's than a one-arm paper hanger. That means it's just... Eh. I, I you don't never know. even heard I of one? No, I don't, I don't know what that is. I have no Where idea. is he from? There is no one arm paper hanger. They all <laughs> all hangers have two. <laughs> First of all, and what uh he's just trying to stay alive, is what he's saying. He can't keep his shirt, he can't keep his shirt on. <laughs> oh, that was great. All right, I'm gonna hit the outro. We've been going for an hour and thirty eight minutes, which is way longer than we usually go. Turn on the music, man. We ain't heard the music in a minute. You got the little... Yeah, I got All it. All right, man. There it is. Where there it is. Hey, thank you guys very much. Subscribe for us, please. Let's do that. And we will see you back on January 24th to talk some recruits. All right, have a good one, y'all. Peace. Peace.